Hello. I know many of you are concerned about returning to school. I want you to know that we're taking precautions to make our facilities and campuses as germ-free as possible. We're working cooperatively with our local health department. I serve on the board of directors of the Florida Association of District School Superintendents, and we meet periodically to share ideas and best practices that are being used around the state. Our district staff and school administrators are communicating regularly to plan and prepare to implement these practices in an effort to ensure a safe and healthy learning environment for our students and staff. Mr. Petey Sims, our risk management director, will outline what those plans look like. I'd like to take a few minutes to describe to you some of the things that we've been doing and working on to put together a protocol for returning back to school. We want all of our students and staff to feel safe and to feel uh, uh, able to do everything they need to do at school. So we put a lot of uh, work and effort into our plan and would like to uh, share a few of those things with you right now. Uh, as students begin to come to school, they'll first arrive at school and our first uh, protocol will be temperature checks. All students entering the building will be screened uh, and anyone that has a fever of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit will be asked to uh, go to an isolation room uh, if their parents have already left. So anyone that's displaying that type of fever would be isolated uh, from the very beginning. We also will be uh, doing uh, visual screenings, looking for uh, signs of coughing, sneezing, runny noses, uh, perhaps uh, flushed cheeks. Those are things that uh, will are also indicators that uh, someone might be having some COVID type symptoms. Those students would also be isolated. So when speaking of isolation, each school will have an isolation room so that anyone that is displaying symptoms would be sent to that room. Uh, there will be a staff member there that will uh, watch them and stay with them. They will put on masks and uh, at that point parents would be contacted and asked to come pick up their child and at that point go to a doctor or some type of medical uh, personnel to, uh, to seek any type of testing that they think they need to do. So that's our first line of defense is we're going to do screenings as they come into the building. Uh, we will not mandate that there is face coverings or masks, but we do strongly recommend and encourage it. And, and hope that uh, students will use those. We do plan on providing uh, students and staff with uh, cloth face coverings that they can take home and wash and bring back every day and they're reusable. So that will be provided and uh, you can also bring any type of mask from home that you would like to. You can provide your own mask. We just ask that they be uh, uh, nothing offensive on them or anything uh, that would be uh, upsetting to someone. Also, we will not allow bandanas to be used as face masks and we don't want full face masks. Something that has an ear loop or can be tied would be the best type of face covering if you're going to send something from home. Uh, as students are transitioning in the halls, as they're moving around in the hallways, uh, again we strongly encourage at that time that they have their mask on and if they uh, are transitioning the way they, we have it designed, the traffic flow will be each child will stay to the right side of the hall, just like we're driving down the highway. Uh, we're going to ask them to social distance. Social distancing, by definition, is six feet apart. Uh, and uh, students, we're just trying to break it down a little simpler for them and tell them, if you can stay two arm lengths apart, if I can reach my arm out and you can reach your arm out, we're probably social distanced. And so we want to stay two arm lengths apart. When we're in the hallway, elementary students will go single file. Uh, that'll be pretty easy to do. In the middle schools and high schools, no more than a double file line, two people next to each other, but again, social distance. And if that can't be achieved, they need to be single file as well. So we, uh, we're going to depend on our students to, uh, to follow these guidelines and keep themselves safe as they're traveling about and going down sidewalks and hallways. Once in the classroom, uh, there's a lot of things going on in the classroom. Number one, uh, the teachers will have the, all the desks and tables distance as far as possible. Our goal is to have them social distance that six feet, but if that's not feasible and that's not possible, then we will uh, get them as far apart as we can. We also will do such things as making all students face forward and not have anybody facing each other, so that way there's not uh, any face-to-face -face contact uh, while they're in the classroom. 
Uh, students in the classroom are welcome to wear their mask, but once they're at their desk and they're social distanced, uh, if they would like to relax a little bit while they're there and take their mask off, we don't have a problem with that. But if they get up and move about the room, we would like for them to have their mask on. Um, the teachers will be uh, teaching all children <laughs> from kindergarten all the way through the 12th grade proper hand washing techniques uh, and how to use hand sanitizer correctly. Those things will uh, be available in all classrooms. So uh, elementary students will probably wash their hands at least four times a day under supervision and we'll encourage high school and middle school to wash their hands as often as they can, especially each time they go to the bathroom. Uh, to and to use hand sanitizer uh, frequently. Each classroom will be provided with hand sanitizer, face tissues, disinfectant wipes, gloves, and the those things will be available every day in the classroom so that uh, teachers and students will be able to uh, sanitize and keep their hands as clean as possible. We also, in the in regards to sanitation, will be doing. Uh, uh, more cleaning than we have in the past and we've always done a good job of cleaning but we're going to be a little more vigilant in that uh, especially high touch areas doorknobs uh, desks chairs things like that those will get wiped down daily and disinfected and uh, we'll try to keep uh, everything as as clean as possible uh, our students going to go to the lunchroom that is possible each school will put together their feeding plan as we call it uh, if they can social distance in that uh, cafeteria, then students will eat in the cafeteria. If it is not possible to social distance within a reasonable time, some schools may eat some grades in the cafeteria. Others may ask that uh, classes eat in the classroom itself. So that'll be a school decision, And uh, but again, anything that happens uh, with feeding will be social distancing and making sure that everyone is safe as they do that. Um, we will have recess, we will have uh, PE, uh, those types of things, again, uh, encouraged to do social distancing. Anytime when uh, their students are together, we want them to social distance. We again uh, encourage them and strongly encourage them to wear their mask so that uh, we're not uh, spreading any contagions as we're, uh, as we're socializing. We realize that everyone is, is anxious to get back to school, see their friends, but it will be important to follow the guidelines that we put in place and to be able to, uh, to help them to keep themselves safe and to keep their families safe because we want them to go home uh, as, as safe as possible. The last thing I'd like to cover with you is buses and uh, that has certainly been a, uh, a, a topic of much discussion throughout the state. Uh, we've been in on those discussions. Social distancing on the bus is just not possible. CDC guidelines tell us to social distance as feasible. Our plan for buses is, is, is we will again strongly recommend and encourage that uh, bus riders wear masks. We're providing sanitizer on all buses, which we've never done before. Uh, we will also uh, make sure that as we load buses, we will try to load back to front so that those that are first getting on will go to the very back of the bus and we'll fill it up to the front. That way students aren't passing each other in the aisle. We're going to try to limit as much as possible two students per seat. And where family members are getting on, uh, if we can put three family members to a seat, we'll do that because they've already been in close contact with each other. So a student that perhaps does show uh, some uh, symptoms on the bus for reserving the front two seats as isolation seats, students would be moved there. They will be given a mask to put on. And as soon as that bus uh, arrives at school, the bus will have already notified the school. There will be a, a staff member waiting to take that child directly to the isolation room at school so that uh, no further contact with other students will be had. A lot of people are wondering what will happen if uh, someone in my child's classroom uh, tests positive for COVID. So let me work through that real quickly. Let's take for an example of maybe a first grade classroom. If a student in there has symptoms of COVID and is sent to the isolation room, goes home and goes to the doctor and takes the test and is, is determined to test positive for COVID-19. Then the Jackson County Health Department will take over and they will do what is called contact tracing. And uh, they're going to looking for, they're looking for people that are in close contact. The uh, definition for close contact is pretty simple. Uh, if you've been in contact with someone without personal protection, without a mask for 15 minutes or longer, and then 48 hours later, you begin to display symptoms of COVID-19, then that's someone that was in close contact. 
the health department, they work through that and they decide who that is. So how does that affect your child that may be in that classroom? Uh, they're going to look at what social distancing uh, practices were used in that classroom. They're going to look at what's happening with uh, the uh, teachers and the interaction in the classroom. And then they're probably going to look to two students on each side of that person that tested COVID-19 positive, two students in front and two students behind, depending again on the social distancing in that classroom. So uh, they will make those contacts. And so uh, there really is no need to worry until you are contacted by the uh, health department. If you're not contacted by the health department, then they have determined uh, that your child was not in close contact with that person or that child that did test positive. So uh, that's how that will work. Now, what about coming back to school if someone has tested positive or if someone has symptoms uh, from COVID-19? If a child is tested positive, they will not return until the Jackson County Health Department uh, tells them that it's safe to do so. Uh, if your child has had symptoms of uh, COVID-19 but did not get tested, then uh, they need to stay out for that 14 days. And, or perhaps if they're fever-free for three days without using any type of fever-reducing medication, and it's been 10 days since the onset or the beginning of those symptoms, and those symptoms have now pretty much gone away, then they can be allowed to come back to school. If you have a child that tests negative, is tested and tests negative, that particular test, if it's uh, the right test, they will be able to come back to school upon testing uh, negative. So there are specific rules for re-entering for staff and students. And uh, any questions you have about that, then you can certainly let us know. But uh, we, will, uh, we will certainly be in close contact uh, with those, and the health department will be in close contact with those that do have symptoms and uh, they'll take care of that for you. If we shut down a, a, a class, it would be because of multiple um, COVID cases in that class. Uh, if we had to have the shutdown of a classroom, we could do that, and the rest of the school is determined by the uh, health department could stay open. It may be possible that we could even have a community outbreak in a certain school that that school closed down and the other schools in the district did not. So uh, again, we work very closely with the health department on making those determinations, and uh, we will uh, do everything as, as possible to, to stay in school and to be able to provide that educational environment that is safe and best for children. But uh, when that time comes to uh, close down uh, parts or all of school, we will certainly do that in conjunction with the health department. Um, these are some of the, the basic measures that we're going through. Um, we certainly uh, are trying to do everything that we can to make as safe an environment as possible. Uh, we are very concerned about our students and our staff. We're also concerned about those that are at home as our students and staff return home. Again, uh, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to uh, reach out on the uh, Facebook page for our Jackson County School Board. Uh, you can uh, also call here at the district office at uh, area code 850-482-1200. And we would be glad to try to answer any other concerns or questions that you have.